Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd. Ayyul ahbab, ayyul ahabba, ahabbati fillah. We were discussing in the last lesson of Shara Sunnah by Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala the qa'ida jalila fi rad ala mukhalifin lil aqida this a very important principle which is a refu refutation of those people who differ with ahl sunnati wal jama'a regarding aqida and creed and it is affirmed in the principle or in the statement of imam barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala where he said, may Allah have mercy upon you, know that a servant's Islam is not complete until he follows. Or Imam Baba Hari said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, may Allah have mercy upon you, know that the sunnah is not a matter for analogies or reasoning with his examples and desires are not to be followed in it. Rather, it is just a case of affirming the narrations from the Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without asking how, explaining or saying why or how. So here Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala, he affirmed for us the principle of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah which is to affirm the narrations. And that Ahl Sunnah, we realize that the Qur'an is the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is perfect. And it is from him subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is one of his sifat. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in a manner that suits his majesty in reality and he subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the Qur'an is from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the kalam of Allah azza wa jal. And we also realize and affirm that the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a type of wahi. It's a type of revelation as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he doesn't speak from his desires but rather he speaks from revelation. That his, his speech is, is revelation. So the sunnah is revelation. And this is imperative for us to understand because we have some of our brothers and sisters they speak without any knowledge. They say whatever feels good, whatever conforms to their desires regarding the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so much so that they belittle Imam Bukhari. But how do you think you have the Qur'an? How do you think you have the pre preservation of how the Qur'an was preserved? It was from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And how do we know this? We know this from books like Bukhari and Muslim, the most sound books uh, in creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech is perfect and is not from his, is not created. But the ahadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most correct and sound books after the Qur'an is Sahih, Muslim, uh, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And those books contain revelation because they contain a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is uh, a type of revelation. Now it isn't at, like the ahkam is not the same as you deal with the Qur'an. For example, for those who believe you have to have wudu and tahara before reading the Qur'an or holding the mushaf that uh, those are ahkam related to that wahi. But regarding the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although some of the Salaf did this, they did make wudu before they read a hadith and narrated a hadith. However, that is, not that is not necessary. So showing us that there are some distinctions, of course. But however, do not call into doubt because your whole religion of Islam is built upon the Qur'an and the sunnah. Not just the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an which is a divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tells you to follow the sunnah. So if you follow the Qur'an, you must follow the sunnah. If you love the Qur'an and believe it's the speech of Allah, then you must believe that the speech that's contained in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also wahi, it is also revelation, but it was articulated by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is imperative, ayyul ahabbati fillah, that we understand this and we know this so that we don't let those people who are ignorant speak and, and cloud us with, with regards to these, uh, these issues. Nor do those people who are already clouded, maybe they will, uh, maybe Allah will give them guidance and maybe Allah will, will bring away some of the dust particles that have consumed their minds, consumed their intellect and clouded them with regards to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Imam Baba Hari Rahimahullah Ta'ala said, 
after making du'a, know that the sunnah is not a matter for analogies. And we explained this in the last sitting. And continuing on, what one of the uh, explainers, uh, the, the, the ulama explaining this, mentioned with regards to this, he, he mentioned that the sunnah here, what is, ref what is referenced here about the sunnah making analogies, again, just so, so that we keep up to date, is we're talking about issues of, uh, of aqaid, of aqidah. These are issues of aqidah. That these issues, this is the sunnah that Imam Barbahadi is referring to and referring to where the qiyas is impermissible. And then the sharah, he explained that, uh, that uh, one example, for example, is, though, is making a, trying to make an analogy between al-khaliq wal-makhluq between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, and his creation. And that is false, and that is batil, and that is haram, and that is impermissible, and that it, uh, can lead a person to uh, leaving the fold of Islam. And so well, that's why we have to be very careful making tashbih between al-khaliq wal makhluq Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, amongst the many ayats which he refers to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, laysa ka mithli shay wa huwa al basir that there is none like him. So this is making, negating nafi of the uh, uh, making tashbih and analogies. Wuhuwa sam'il basir. And then this is making ithbat. This is affirming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses hearing and his hearing is not like our hearing. And he possesses sight, but his sight is not like our sight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sight and his hearing is kamil. Is kamil. Meaning that it's complete perfect. It has no nux from any way. There's no way to possibly, uh, there's, there's no shortcomings in it. Whereas we, we lose our sight. Matter of fact, maybe I'll have to have glasses in the future. Showing that we, we have, we are limited. So there's no comparison between al khalik or makhluk. We can't make those comparisons. Then the, uh, then he, uh, the Shah he mentioned, uh, so those, those people, who uh, this qaida is a reputation for those people who fall into this tashbih and also waqa'u fi mukhalifat wa waqa'u fi ta'wil al-madhmum alladhi ja'al al-aql aslan fi tafsir this is imperative absolutely imperative that we understand this and uh, here he's saying that those people who have deviated with regards to the sky, the, this principle, which Imam Abba Bahadi is establishing for us, and which is a refutation of, uh, of their going astray, refuting how they, their, their mistake, is that these people, some of the people, have fallen in ta'wil madhmum. Ta'wil al-madhmum alladhi ja'al al-aql aslan. Tafsir. So, re with regards to tafsir in the ayats, especially the ayat of uh, the divine attributes and names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his divine sifat, that some groups and sects like the Asha'ira, the Maturidiya, and, and others, that they, with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine uh, names and attributes, they make ta'wil. And they make their intellect the foundation to refer to. In, in understanding the divine names and attributes. So basically saying, if it doesn't conform to my intellect, then it needs to be changed. We need to understand it in accordance with my intellect. We need to change the meaning in order to fit my intellect. This is in essence what Ahl Ta'wil, Ta'wil Madhmum, what they fall into and what they do. So they make their intellect the foundation instead of the Nasus, whereas Ahl Sunnah they prefer and they make the text of the Quran and the Sunnah the Asl. That that's the foundation. And that which we do not understand, which doesn't conform to our Aql, we say that's from the shortcoming of our, uh, of our intellect, not from the Nasus. And there are many things which we won't know the divine hikmah of, but we practice it. We hear and we obey. 
and we follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. And we follow Allah, we obey Allah, and we obey the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in commandments, but also in the understanding of creed and intellect. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar Rahman ala ars astawa, Allah, uh, the, the Most Merciful, rose above his throne. We say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't change it, we don't say it means estola. We don't uh, make any analogies or qiyas with it, but rather we accept those nusus. The Prophet ﷺ said in a Sahih Hadith, "Yanzilu uh, Rabbuna Taala that Allah the Almighty descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night, and He says, and this Hadith is Sahih. I believe you'll find it in Sahih Muslim. And on Sunday, we accept those nusus, and we don't make qiyas. We don't say, well, it's in Ch China, it's uh, such and such time, Seattle, Washington, it's this time, Saudi Arabia and Riyadh, it's this time, Hafuf, it's this time, uh, the UK, it's this time. Uh, so how could that be? We need to change the meaning to fit our intellect, uh, you know, or we change the meaning in order because we don't want to fall into tashbih or in, in resemblance, so we'll, make, we'll change the meaning of nuzul. Where, Allah, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Yanzalu Rabbana Tabarakotara. He said that our Lord descends. He said our Lord descends every last third of the night. So we accept that descent. We don't need to change the meaning of descent to mean his, uh, his commandments descend or his, uh, his ability or whatever the different ta'wil uh, batil that Ahl uh, batil falls into. May Allah guide us in them. And this is why it's important that we go with the tafsir of the mufassirin, mu'tabirin, from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And those, those early mufassirin, especially from the Sahaba, wa tabi'in, wa tabi'in, wa tabi'in. And then those who follow them in a sand, ila yawm ad -deen. Those are the taf tafsir that we want to stick to. That that which has very little rai and very little uh, opinions and views, but rather it uh, makes explanation of the Qur'an according to other nusus, according to other ayats, so we know the context, and according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and according to the understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een wa tabi'een. Those are uh, some of the most important forms of tafsir, because those are the tafsir that will keep you from going astray, and keep you from falling into making an analogy and going away from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or understanding it in, uh, out of its context. So then he mentioned, as, as we just uh, mentioned, the importance of sticking to those tafsir. And then he said, فَإِذَا ظَهَرَ تَعَارَدْ بَيْنَهُمَا فَيَنْبَغِي تَعْوِيلَ النُّصُوصِ إِلَى مَا يُوَافِقَ الْعَقَلْ كِتَعْوِيلَ دِلَةَ الرُّؤْيَةِ وَدِلَةَ عَلُوْ وَآيَاتِ الصِّفَاتِ Asifat wama ila dhalik. So the Shaykh he then mentioned what we just mentioned, but he brings us some other benefits here. He says basically that uh, uh, ta'wil, the people of, for example, the uh, Ashaira and uh, Maturidiya and before them the Mu'tazila and, and some of the other sects uh, from Ahla uh, Ahla Kalam, that they they fell into this uh, to making false ta'wil and some of them totally negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine uh, attributes or they'll, they'll uh, affirm his names but they'll negate the attributes they'll get, negate his sifat so they'll say yes his name is Ar-Rahman without Rahmah and this is some of the more extreme this is closer to the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiyyah and then you have like some of the other groups like uh, who, who make ta'wil like the Asha'ira and Maturidiyah, which are more relevant for us in this time. And so they use their intellect. If it does not, uh, it's not in accordance with their intellect and their intellectual capacity to grasp those ayahs, to grasp the meaning, then they will change the meaning in order to fit their intellect. Whereas Ahl Sunnah, as we mentioned, uh, has the opposite with regards to a principle. And then he said, and he gave some examples, Kitawila Dilatu Ru'ya, as they use the Ru'ya meaning that the mu'mineen will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, that they make ta'wil with regards to this, that they uh, interpret this to, in, in a manner which is not in conformity to 
the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, first and foremost to the Quran and the Sunnah and the uh, Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhi majma'in, how they understood the Ru'ya. So instead of Ahl Ta'wil, they make Ta'wil, they you awaluna uh, a Ru'ya uh, in order to fit them. And also the Adilata Alu, as we mentioned, the uh, the evidences from the Quran that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Istawa uh, and Alu that Allah is above His creation and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala rose above His throne. That they uh, use Tatwil in order to uh, make those those um, those sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to seem more appealing uh, to them and more acceptable to their intellect. And then he said, "Wasalaf yarfuduna hada nur min Tatwil, wiyuhtiuna." القائل به ويشتد ويشتدون ويشتدون في نكير عليه. So this is very important. Being from أهل السنة, then we take from the Salaf of this Ummah, and the Salaf, the Madhab of the Salaf, as he mentions, is that they used, they rejected this type of Tawil, this Tawil Madhmu, and they can, you know, from أهل Kalam. And they considered that, uh, they considered the ones who, who did this kind of ta'wil to be people who have made mistakes, that these are mistakes, that they're mistaken by doing this. And they also made a very severe uh, warning and ankar or uh, rejection of this kind of ta'wil. They were very strong about rejecting it, and this is why they referred to those to those people who had this kind of ta'wil as ahl al and ahl kalam and they, you know, had very strong statements about how to deal with them and, and the ahkam, the ahkam uh, pertinent to that. So this shows us ahl sunnah they don't make ta'til of nasus as uh, the Jahamiya and Mu'tazila do, and, and in a sense that the Asha'ira do to a, uh, to a degree. And they don't go uh, to give it to a, a different meaning or a different view or opinion, which is outside of its original uh, understanding. And this is imperative for us to understand. And we went more in depth with this in our uh, our durus uh, regarding Aqidah Tawasatiyah. So go back to those durus or some of the books, or if you have an explanation from some of the that are translated from some of the ulama, then go back to those and you'll get a, a, a stronger understanding of the ta'wil of the asha'ira. But here, Imam Baba Hari is just laying that principle down and then we gave some examples and we also gave some benefit from one of the explainers of uh, Shara Sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Evil, Anything we said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. And the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Wassalam.